everyone welcome to the next session of finite element analysis i am starting with the next chapter that is direct application of eme eme stands for element matrix equation now i will be explaining this to you when i start solving the numericals when i show you the emes you would understand them better but as of now you can just take this term as element matrix equation All I can tell you is the elements that we are going to form are going to be in the form of a matrix and they will be in the form of an equation. So that is the whole meaning of this term. Now I will be telling you about some terms that I am going to repeatedly use in this chapter. The first one being meshing. Now suppose if I am analyzing a step bar. In FEA, the procedure of solving this bar is by dividing this into horizontal and vertical lines like these so these are called as meshes and the process is called as meshing next term is discretization discretization means again dividing this into smaller sections now these structures which you see over here are rectangular now these can be in the form of a rectangle it can be the form of a triangle it can be any quadrilateral or it can be simply a hexagon, a pentagon, anything. So you can have various shapes over here so that you are dividing them into equal sizes. You will solve for one or two elements and then you can just integrate in the software and you can say that you are getting the answer for the entire body. So this is the process of discretization. Next term is elements. When I talk about discretization that is dividing into these parts, this one small section is one element. Next one is another element. So there are n number of elements that I have formed over here. Next term is nodes. This element which you see in the form of a rectangle, this is element. So say this is first element, this is second element. Now when I am taking out the first element over here, I will be denoting it with the help of a triangle. So for element, the denotation is a triangle and there is a number inside. Whereas when I talk about a node, this entire element will have four nodes. So one, two, three, four. These are the four nodes. You are seeing the way I am numbering them in the form of a circle. So this is called as nodes. One element will have four nodes if it is a rectangle or a quadrilateral. If it is a triangle, it will have three nodes or more. It is a hexagon, it will have six or more. It depends. Now this way of numbering is called as topology. Just remember for now that numbering in order is very important in FEA. 1, 2, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 3, 4. We never number 1, 2, 3, 4. Cross. Just remember this point. I will be discussing this little more in depth in the upcoming sessions. Because as of now, explanation is not going to help much. So these are just some terms which you need to know because I am going to use them repeatedly throughout my sessions. Now I would also like to add one more thing that is about meshing. There are various types of meshes that you can form. Now this meshes can be of various shapes as we have discussed. It can be of various sizes. When I talk about sizes, it can be something like a coarse mesh. It can be something which is of a fine mesh type or it can be something which is called as a medium mesh. So these are basic three types of meshing. When I say it's a coarse mesh, I would say the mesh is something like this, a bigger one. The element is of a bigger size. Fine mesh means the element size will be very small. It's the same element which is very small. Medium will be something in between these two. Say the first element is divided like this. So these are the three types of meshes which are basically possible. But there are in-depth meshing options which are possible with the latest softwares that are available in the market. I have already made some videos on ANSYS. You can go through the lectures of ANSYS. I have explained in depth about meshing. You will understand what are the types of meshing and one thing which you need to remember, I have already stressed in the lectures of ANSYS. I would like to stress again that meshing should always be of a good quality. When I say good quality, it means I would try to divide this element into more number of meshes. I would like to mesh more. I would like to have more elements. I would like to have more nodes. 
The reason for this is more the number of elements, more the number of nodes, better will be your solution. You would be able to obtain very precise solution at points where you want. If you divide into very less number of meshes, that is elements, you would be able to obtain results at just few points. So more the meshing, better the results. But again, when you are purchasing a software, you generally purchase a software based on the number of elements or the nodes that you want for your solution. That is, more the accuracy you expect, more is going to be the cost that will be you know, incurred when you buy the software. Professional softwares generally come with 5 lakh, 10 lakh or more nodes. So they help you divide this element into more number of elements and nodes so that you get better results. But when you solve in the class, obviously it is not possible to divide into n number of elements. Otherwise, the solution will become very, very lengthy to solve. So we are going to divide in the class into two elements, three elements, and that is a limitation of solving by paper and pen. But when you use a software, obviously that difficulty is overcome and you can divide into more number of elements, nodes and get more precise answers. Next, we'll talk about the four basic steps of FEM. There are four steps as you can see over here. The first step is discretization as I just told you. You are going to divide a particular element, say a step bar into various number of elements. Next is development of EME. This is element matrix equation. So you need to develop a matrix equation for each element in this big structure that is given to you. Next what you do is you form GME. GME means global matrix equation which means you are going to add all these EME that you have written for each element and then form a total equation for the entire body. And the fourth and the last step is applying a boundary condition. For example, if the bar is fixed at one end, you are applying load at the other end. So the boundary conditions are fixed and load. So this will help you calculate the displacement at this end which will be zero and displacement at this end which will be maximum. Now if you divide into more number of meshes, what happens is apart from these two points which generally your theory gives us answer, you can find the value of displacement at any point on this body which is the best part of using a software. Now we will be discussing about certain rules of discretization when you have a particular step bar. Now this is just an example that I am giving you of a step bar. You can have any other applications of FEA as well. Say if I have a step bar, there is a load of 5 kN here, there is a load of 15 kN at this end. So there are two loads applied on the step bar. Now how are we supposed to demarcate the elements and the nodes? So this is something which is very important. We will see the rules of discretization. The distinct nodes to be identified when there is change in geometry. When I say geometry, that means when there is a change in cross section. Like you can see over here, this is the first body which I will mark and this is the second element. Now these are the two elements that I can very clearly see over here. So when I have two elements, I will be marking the node at a point where there is change in geometry. That is at this point. So I should be marking a node over here. When there is a change of material property, now there are various material properties which you have studied in strength of material that is Young's modulus, bulk modulus, you have modulus of rigidity and you have Poisson's ratio mu. These are the four properties that you have studied. So wherever you see that there is a change in property, for example, the first material is aluminium, second material is steel, obviously when there is a change in material at this junction, I should be marking a node. Now you would say that this rule also says mark a node, this rule also says mark a node. Uh, so should I be marking two nodes? No. These two rules are superimposing. So you will just be marking one node at this point. I would say that these two rules fit for this node and you are just going to mark one node here. Next is change of loading. At this junction again you can see that there is a sudden loading that is placed. Obviously at this point there is a node because this is a point where there is a load. And also at this junction where you can see sudden change of load, you are supposed to mark a node here. And the last is very simple one which actually should be the first rule that is also mark nodes at the end point. So at these two end points, you should always mark nodes. Now labeling of nodes should be very much carefully done. That is I will start say from left to right. So first node, second node and third node. If you want, you can say this is first, second and third. These two are just two different ways of numbering. It's your choice what you want to use. 
I will always start from left to right. So 1, 2 and 3. Unless the question definitely is given that 1, 2, 3 is supposed to be used. I will go by this choice of numbering. Now it is very important to number 1, 2, 3 and not 1, 3, 2 or 3, 1, 2 something like that. Don't do that. Preferably go in order 1, 2, 3. I will tell you when I show you certain EMEs and I'll form some GME for you and then I'll show you what is the use of having this kind of a topology. This is very important and this helps in increasing your computation speed. So you should definitely do it. So with this I end the session. I hope you have understood the basics of this chapter. This basics will help you solve the numericals. In the next few sessions, we are going to only discuss about numericals of this chapter. See you in the next session. Thank you. Thank you.